Once more, thanks to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. The holidays are in full swing and it's close to the end of the year, so let's give some love to Raycon earbuds one last time. Their everyday E25 lineup, for example, can make a great holiday gift for a family, a friend, or a neighbor who decides to sing karaoke late at night and force you to record this promo entirely in voiceover. Raycons are quality Bluetooth earbuds that start at about half the price compared to other premium earbuds out there and sound just as good. You don't have to take my word for that. Celebrities and musicians like Melissa Etheridge, Snoop Dogg, Rich the Kid, and Mike Tyson swear by them. There's a bunch of colors to pick from, I personally took the red ones myself, and their sleek, compact design fits nice in the ears, giving you a great noise isolating fit. They last around six hours on a single charge, but the carrying case itself can be charged to give you more hours of playtime on the go. Use them during your next grocery run while carrying a crap ton of sanitizer, of course, or stay in the house and use them while doing chores or while working out like I do. Raycon's being generous for the holidays, so on top of their everyday great prices, they're offering all my viewers 15% off right now so you can save big on gift shopping. Click the link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash somecallmejohnny to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. There's also a 45-day free return policy so you can make sure you find the right pair for yourself without breaking the bank. Celebrate the holidays with a pair of Raycons and please, as always, be safe out there. Hey, how's it going? No hard feelings after the Spider-Man video, right? No, I have some folks concerned about you. You know, I know I raised you a lot tougher than that. Look, she's just fine. For those legitimately curious about her well-being, she's fine. Don't mess with the lavalier mic now. All right, Astro's Playroom. So I was originally going to make this a spotlight instead of a... Um uh, instead of making a full-out review. Astral's Playroom is a game that comes with your brand spanking new PlayStation 5. No real merit in judging its worth since it comes with the console. I guess you could technically say it costs $500. Well, you have this whether you want to or not, and normally I expect something like this to be on the budgeted side, something that's probably a little short and shallow. But to my surprise, this turned out to be better than I thought it was, so you know what, let's just make a regular video out of the thing. And not that this has any relevancy, but I'll flex when I can, damn it. But it turns out I was right on the money when guessing what this game was going to be about during my spotlight on the PS5 showcase earlier this year. A platformer that was one part a means to get you familiar with your new console, and in another part, a celebration of PlayStation's long and fruitful career. But I sort of underestimated that last bit because this game isn't just a celebration, it's a goddamn circle jerk, with every participant being a different Sony console. But apparently this isn't the first game to star Astro. I looked it up and there was also this Astrobot rescue mission. And, oh, yeah, okay, that would explain it, VR game. I got nothing against VR, it's just not my thing. Not counting my brief session in my Metal Gear Acid video starring Solid Eye Robot, who's long since deceased, rest in peace, my only other experience with VR was during a convention a couple of years ago. The set wasn't properly calibrated, my vision was blurred, and I got a massive headache afterwards, so I always sort of associated that experience when I think of VR. But I know now, and I got plenty of folks who'll tell me, it's a lot better than it used to be, and I believe it, I'm just not in any sort of rush to give it another go. But now that I'm actually looking at footage from Rescue Mission, it seems that for Astro's Playroom, they just decided to give us more of that without the VR headset. Astro's Playroom places you in control of one of, of many Astro's, I'm guessing these are all Astro's anyway, and goddamn, either these folks are mass-produced in an assembly line, or some couple out there is seriously fucking their brains out and pumping out units. The design of Astro is quite cute, though, and I love the expressiveness of their LED display. They always greet you with a smile when you leave them idle long enough, or they take the time out to bust out the PlayStation Portable. Wow. There's nothing here. Nah, they're adorable. Even if they are just basically the love child of Eve and Wally minus the environmental message. Now nah, everything is made of tech here, even the, the grass and the trees. I'm sure this is supposed to look like water, but it might be liquid coolant, maybe some viscous thorough paste. Wouldn't be surprised if this is later revealed to be set in a post-apocalyptic world where the last remaining thing alive was an iPhone. That grim possibility aside, it looks like everyone here is enjoying themselves anyway. Got a bunch of Astros playing some PlayStation classics like uh, Bot Charted, Bot of War, Bot, although considering this is a reference to Ico, maybe it's pronounced b -ot. No mention of Heavenly Bot, though, I guess it didn't catch on. A lot of them just spend the time partying and dancing, breaking down with moves new and old, some dabbing, some flossing, some teetering on the brink, and some hanging on the brink. Long live the king. <laughs> But just how old are these guys supposed to be? Look at these two. What the fuck? Who taught them that? This is why the PS5 got rid of the web browser. Cotton was right, goddammit. It doesn't stop there, though. These guys also spend their days cosplaying as different video game characters. Lots of games from PlayStation's history, or games that made their mark on the PlayStation before jumping ship and later making amends. You got Silent Hill. Look at that one right there. Oh, he's so terrified. You got Resident Evil. Zombie's not gonna kill itself. Chris, let me get that door for you. You got Devil May Cry. Dante doing an S-rated combo there. The S standing for slap. And then there's Final Fantasy. Oh, Jesus, assholes! This is a burial spot, and you... You turned it into a tourist attraction. He's spinning in his grave, fucker. It's just like the sword did for a second there, my bad. Okay, so I know the whole point of the game is. I understood that reference. There was still a lot here that elicited fond memories. The Astro playing with the Ridge Racer car? That was me back in 1996. Although the default FA Racing Fiera, come on now. 
The RT Ryukyu had superior handling and was smooth as butter. Somebody please educate this child. Also, haha, <laughs> you fools thinking you can play multiplayer and bot racer with just one console. <laughs> Idiots. Still, the goal of all this is to make you reminisce about your personal PlayStation experiences, whether you were there from the beginning or as recent as the PlayStation 4, and yeah, of course it will work on someone like me. Even after spending some time making dedicated videos on the PlayStation 1 and 2, I get to the end of this world, I get the classic boot up screen and PlayStation logo, and I'm smiling. I get to the end of this world, and I'm greeted by the PS2 menus and interface, including the spinning crystals and those light orbs that hypnotize my teenage self, and I'm back in the year 2000. The game also serves as a history lesson for the PlayStation, and there's some shit here I didn't even know existed until playing this. Everyone knows of things like the consoles, the multi-tap boomerang, the dildo gun, or even the Japan-only pocket station, but the PSP had a GPS dongle? What the hell? The age before smartphones was so weird. Who in God's name used their PSP as a GPS device? This is a serious question, by the way. If you, if you had one of those, please leave a comment below because those are stories I want to hear. But there is a game attached to all this play stroke in 5, so let's get into that for a bit. As you can see, it's a pretty run of the mill 3D platformer. You collect things to make a number go up, and then you eventually win the game. I thought this was an intelligence cube reference at first, but they ended up playing with my emotions, the pricks. You got gold coins to nab, puzzle pieces that will eventually complete these murals on the wall in the central hub, and as I mentioned earlier, those artifacts. The puzzle pieces and artifacts require a keen eye to nab most of them. I only recall one or two giving me trouble to find, but that was more on me overthinking a solution, which I tend to do when I'm trying to nab everything. You have infinite lives, so the gold coins are strictly for the gadget machine in the lobby. You use them to get more puzzle pieces and artifacts, and eventually you'll clean the machine out when you invest enough coins inside, so despite the fact that there's no lives, you still have incentive for collecting all the currency. Or you could just head straight to the end of the level and get a move on. All the collectibles are just for completionist purposes and trophies, some of which you can even toss at others. A great thing is that if there's a puzzle piece or artifact you missed at a specific point in the level, you can warp back there at any time from anywhere lickety split. No doubt the game's showing off that fancy SSD inside the system. There's even an entire world based off the SSD's performance. Next to no load times, I'm wondering how long it's going to take for me to get used to that in this generation. I did notice some lag on occasion despite that though. It was rare, mainly confined to the jungle level, but I find it funny that a game that's supposed to demonstrate the console's possibilities is also inadvertently demonstrating its limitations. Astral controls pretty well, standard stuff, you can hover for a bit with your laser feet, and you can smack things with a one-two punch, hold the button down, and you can even do this tornado spin making Crash Bandicoot proud, or at least this Crash Fanatic proud. Now you're doing the insane version of the dance, where's the pelvic thrust, you coward? Astro doesn't have anything else besides the occasional power-up, and you only find those in specific stages, a Gatling gun in the space level or a bow and arrow in the jungle level, both used in very brief sections to demonstrate the controller's haptic feedback, gyro aiming, and the adaptive triggers. It's a very cozy game that at some point spices things up, but it's mostly a PlayStation joyride that wants to show you how certain features work, namely the possibilities of the DualShock 5. And it's when the game wants to demonstrate those features is where it sort of, uh, falters. Every world has two sections where the center of attention is on one of the controller's key features, though the game on occasion will also ask you to do something innocuous like blowing into the mic to trigger an event. Hey, buddy, this is why you wear a mask, asshole! The nerve. <laughs> In Memory Meadow, the touchpad gets to love. You transform into this ball and roll along narrow pathways, sliding the pad in the direction you want to go. It's fine until you have to deal with uneven terrain and ice, because now it's entirely up to the physics god to move correctly, more so if you're doing the speedrun version of the stage where you have to book it for a good time. Admittedly, this one isn't so bad, again, the game doesn't really challenge you that much, especially if you don't care about the collectibles, but I'm unsure on how I should be sliding on the pad. Should I be treating the pad like an analog stick and slide from the center, or do I just slide from edge to edge? I don't think the game makes that clear enough. Cooling Springs has this frog mech, you use the triggers for these, squeezing the fuck out of them to get a bigger jump, and tilting the controller to get some extra distance. Like the ball, it isn't so bad until you have to use it on moving platforms, where it's either do or die or waste a whole bunch of time. Thankfully, the unlimited lives makes this less painful overall, but man, it can be Spring Mario flimsy. SSD Speedway has two gimmicks, and almost as if some cosmic entity is mocking me, one of them is a goddamn hang glider. You use the gyro controls for these, and again, I'm noticing a trend here, they're fine unless you want to be precise and try and collect stuff, which is always the deal with these sort of things, isn't it? I, I just, whatever, I just, I don't need those coins, I got shit to do. There's also the rocket, and this one, you know, this one's okay. The triggers act as your gas pedals. Hold one side to go in that direction, or hold both down to take off in great speeds. Combined with the haptic feedback and sound coming out of the speaker, not too bad, plenty immersive, and it massages my hands. Then there's this, this monkey in GPU jungle. You're not only alternating between the triggers to climb these rocks, but you're also tilting the controller to extend your arm to reach them at all. It is so awkward. You'll get into a consistent motion at some point. The sections aren't terribly long either, and swinging off the poles is pretty fun, especially when you get some big jumps. 
But good god, I hope this is the only game I ever play on this console that does something like this. I guess we'll find out in my eventual PlayStation 5 retrospective. Assuming I'm still alive at that point. For a pack-in adventure, Astro's Playroom is one of the better examples out there, I feel. It's no Sonic 1 or Super Mario World, even with it constantly stroking my PlayStation Move, if you know what I mean. But it was a nice four hours spent. I collected all the puzzle pieces, all the artifacts, spent every coin I had to empty out the gadget machine, and I even did all the speedrun levels, which isn't just the time attack going through the previous stage, no. They're unique stages catered specifically to speedrunning, and I like that. It was fun trying to zip down these as fast as I could until I got to the gimmick shit where I wanted it to be over just to say I did it. Astro's Playroom is a great distraction while you're waiting waiting for your copy of Spider-Man or Demon's Souls to install. It's designed to be a holdover game, and I say it meets that design pretty damn well. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask if you decide to go outside, because clearly this douchebag didn't. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care.